Hey there, Gibbs families. Hope you had a wonderful weekend. Kristen Francisco here. I have the, a vlog I've prepared for you about getting ready for seventh grade. This probably will be one of my last vlogs of the year. I will probably come out maybe one more time and uh, with a, a message for students for getting ready for summer and some things that they can do in the summer. But I wanted to give you one more vlog around seventh grade and getting ready together. So I created a slideshow for you and I am going to share that with you right now. And as it gets ready to present, I want to keep the theme of this slideshow about growth mindset and pushing forward out of the school year that we did not expect to end this way and into a school year that could very well begin in a way we weren't anticipating for for school to begin. Um, so I think that celebrating the fact that your child has finished sixth grade and is getting ready to go to Audison Middle School, uh, they are probably very excited. Uh, even though that we, as I said, we didn't end the year the way that we might have wanted to, that doesn't mean they shouldn't be very excited about moving to their next grade level. So let's get ready together. Um, at the very beginning of sixth grade, you actually received a handy pamphlet all about sixth graders. Um, it is a yardsticks pamphlet. You might even be able to put your hands on it still. There's also one for seventh graders. And I thought it might be helpful to go through some of the developmental phases of a seventh grader so that you could start to make sense of some of the things your seventh grader might be showing you. First off, let's start with what you should tell your seventh grader. It's definitely a difficult task to ask our sixth graders to transfer from one building and grade to another in the middle of this pandemic. So let's talk a little bit about it. Let's talk about all the things your sixth graders are prepared for, where your sixth graders are developmentally, some things you can do over the summer to stay in the game, and some reminders from previous vlogs. So here's what your sixth graders already know. Okay, they've already gotten used to having more than one teacher. They have already started to understand how remote learning works a little bit, in case there's some of that in the fall. And they've already had experience with the growth mindset language they need. So I'd like to remind you a little bit about that growth mindset language now. If you remember, we talked about growth mindset at the beginning of the pandemic. And this was where we were helping students to not slip into that fixed mindset or of I can't, or this is horrible, or I'm not going to be able to do this, and flipping that script into this might not be how I wanted to end my year, but here are some things I can do to help me end it on a good note. You're going to be saying, wanting to remember and say those same kinds of things as we're ending the year and students are getting ready to head up to Audison. So here are some things to remember from our vlogs. The first was that growth mindset that I just talked a little bit about. Remind your children that they can choose to have a growth mindset about transition to seventh grade in this way. They will learn and be great. Remember also that students have been taught through a release of responsibility mode. So sixth graders have, have been becoming more and more responsible about organization and being flexible. Remind them that they can transfer these skills. Project-based learning. Project-based learning taught sixth graders and gave them experience with research, organization, presentation, and reflection, and all of these skills are transferable. Remember, your, your, all of your sixth graders lived under the core values of understanding unified and unstoppable. They really understand that they try to be the best they can, they can be about knowing what the situation is that they find themselves in, that they can understand that situation and ask tough questions and figure out the why. And then they're unified when they're explaining why we need to be unified and keeping each other healthy and modifying how do we do what we do together should be met with success. And then they are unstoppable. Sixth graders are used to hearing that by understanding what we need to do and being unified in doing it, we are unstoppable. So you can still and certainly should lean on those three U's as you're working to tra help transition your child to a new grade level. Here are some reminders of the characteristics of 11 year olds. I'm gonna leave this up on the screen for you to kind of read as you're watching a little bit. I won't read every single one of them, 
But do remember, socially, they're moody. They challenge rules. They need, to, they need adults to be sensitive with them and have some empathy. They're very worried about who's in and who's out and where they fit. Physically, they're restless and energetic. They need a lot of food, physical activity, and sleep. They have growth spurts. Girls have growth spurts. Growing pains may cause, may cause some aches and pains at night. And they might have more colds, ear infections, flu, things like that. And then cognitively, they can think abstractly. They begin to challenge adult explanations. They want to learn new skills. They want to enjoy brain teasers and puzzles. And deep down, they like adult tasks. So this is an 11-year-old, which is where your children, most of them probably were at the beginning of sixth grade. So you should see them start to grow out of some of this phase and into the next one. 12-year-olds. And if your child has already turned 12, maybe you're already seeing some of these things. Peer opinions still matter, a lot more than adult ones do. They tend to argue with adults. They want ceremonies and rituals to mark their successes. Um, they oftentimes will make connections with adults other than their parents. And they really can start to handle some responsibility, and they want that responsibility. Physically, they're very energetic but they need lots of sleep. They enjoy phys ed, they enjoy sports. Both boys and girls are having girl growth spurts and girls are showing the, those initial signs of puberty. Cognitively, they may start to excel at a specific subject or skill and really be passionate about it. So you may have seen that over the last year. They understand and enjoy sarcasm and, and, and you know more sophisticated jokes, so they enjoy that, albeit my jokes on Friday afternoons for their announcements. Not very sophisticated, but they seem to like them. And they're enthusiastic about the schoolwork that they can find purpose in, such as research and experiments. Project-based learning usually is pretty successful with students this age because of that. They can set goals and concentrate and they're interested in things like civics and history, social justice. So these will be some of the things that they get to, a chance to continue with next year at Audison. And then finally, if your child is eking up on 13 or getting ready to, to turn 13, or maybe we'll be 13 in eighth grade, you can see where the direction in which we're going. Social, moody, sensitive. Anger can flare up pretty quickly. Feeling, their feelings are easily hurt. And they can also hurt other, others' feelings pretty easily, too. They're concerned about their appearance. They like to be left at, alone when they're at home. Maybe they're spending time in their rooms. They really do like to work alone or maybe with one other person. They're not too jazzed about working in groups. And they want to start to define their personality and their independence a little bit. They still have physically have lots of energy. Their skin problems might start to occur. Most girls have reached full physical development and boys are starting to show those first signs of puberty. And then because of those changes in their body, PE and health education starts to get a little embarrassing. You might hear about that. And cognitively, they're a little tentative. They're worried. They're, they're not really sure about taking risks. Things that are tough. They don't want to make mistakes. This is where that growth mindset comes in quite a bit. They're interested in fairness, justice, discrimination. Their written communication is often a lot better than their ability to communicate verbally. So writing about things that are bothering them, journaling often is a better approach. They need short, predictable homework assignments to build their study habits. And they're starting to think about many sides of an issue, that an issue might not have just the way they think about it, but also the way others do. So I am going to actually scroll back over those and give you a second. So there was the 11-year-old. They started in sixth grade. Okay. Here's the 12-year-old where most of them probably are now for you to take another peek at. And then here's the 13-year-old where they either are, some of them could, could very potentially be 13 and others of them are, are going, this is where they're headed. So remember these things as you're seeing signs and, and um, signals from your, from your sixth grader into seventh grader that behavior has a reason. When we talked about behavior having a reason, it could very well be that the reason is developmental, socially, physically, or cognitively. So as you move through the summer months 
I'd, I'd like to encourage you to remember that all students were in a remote learning situation, every one of them. And summer should be reading to your children or having them read to you or setting up some sort of reading schedule to keep their brain thinking in the reading world. And, you know, it's also an escape for lots of kids. Go on adventures with your family. Reset. Start to think about, okay, how are we going to shift? What kind of changes might we need to make for the fall? And most importantly, grow your family mindset. Be positive about having a great summer and be positive about starting school in the fall because remember, kids are hearing what you say. So the way you talk about the fall is the way they're going to internalize thinking about the fall as well. So be careful to talk about it positively and to be planful. And a good plan for a student helps them make, uh, feel really great about what's to come. So I hope this was a helpful vlog. I hope it gave you some things to think about um, as far as the behavior you might be seeing and the behavior you'll see in the fall. Some little tips there. And I hope that this vlog leads you into a wonderful week ahead. We're almost there. I appreciate you tuning in and watching and I'll see you soon.